Hey guys, it's Doug Giles again, and welcome back to Creative Restorations. Uh, let's see, today's video, we are gonna talk about the finer points, and I'm gonna show you some of the finer points of recovering a set of rails. Now, some of you guys may have seen my previous uh, video where I showed you how to recover a pool table, and uh, I realized that maybe some of the shots that I had on the, you know, especially how you do the ends uh, by the pockets on your rails, uh, may not have been exactly the clearest shots. So for anybody that's looking to do a set of rails, this is how you go about doing it. Now, I'm gonna preface this video by saying that there is no substitute for learning. There's no substitute for experience. And uh, although, you know, you may get lucky and get and, and hit it exactly right on the first try, uh, chances are that's not going to happen. Uh, it's taken me literally at least 10 years to perfect the way that I do pool tables and the way that I stretch cloth and everything. And with rails, with doing the rails, if you stretch the cloth too tight, you're gonna end up with dimples in the rubber. And if you stretch it too loose, well, you're gonna have loose cloth. You know, there's no two ways about it. Uh, you have to do that all the while, trying to eliminate wrinkles that are underneath, eliminate all that excess cloth underneath the, uh, the rail. So it's a, it's a, you're dancing a fine line with trying to get it right. So, but I'm gonna show you how I do it now. I'm also going to say that there are multiple ways of going about recovering rails. Um, most of them are going to be pretty close to the same. You know, the, one person's way is going to be relatively close to the way that someone else does it. And my way is relatively close to all of them. Uh, but uh, especially as it pertains to the side pockets, um, I do it a little bit differently. Uh, some people cut the excess, take away the excess material from the pockets, from the side pockets. I don't, as you'll see by the video, I don't take away that excess. Um, it's really, it's just kind of pointless. Uh, once I really started thinking about what's going on in the material that's there and if I trim it, is that gonna make a difference? Uh, is it going to thin out any of the cloth that's there? And when I really started thinking about it, well, it doesn't. There's really no difference whatsoever. So I don't trim it. Um, and you'll see that. So let's get into recovering a set of rails and I'll talk you through it. All right. So I start off by taking the cloth out of the bag, removing the little, little sheet that they wrap around there and throw that away. I never even read it. But I open up the cloth and I'm going to double check to make sure I have all of my rails, make sure I have my spots and make sure I have my chalk. We got David playing cameraman off to the side. He's showing the close up view of what it is I'm doing. So now that I've taken all the rails out, I'm going to go ahead and lay them out. It doesn't really matter the order in which you do this. Uh, Personally, I'll, I like to work with a bit of order. Um, I like to make sure that I've triple checked everything and everything is laying out in a good place for me to grab everything. I'm counting up the number of rails again, just in case I don't have all of them, which has never happened. I've never not gotten all of the rails, but gotta, gotta check. So what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm putting quite a bit of pressure and I'm pulling that feather strip out. Now you notice right there, the, the feather strip started to break. So I'm just gonna take my time and try to get it out in one piece. Now there's a little bit of a knot right there that, that was a, a weak point, but you know what? No big deal. That feather strip gets covered over. Now what I did there is I put my finger underneath the feather strip and just gave it a little bit of upward tension while I'm trying to get that cloth out. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean off. I'm gonna go grab my brush and I wanna get rid of any dust, any hand powder or anything like that that has managed to work its way down in there and trust me, it gets pretty nasty. 
Now, next thing, we're gonna look to find our sticker that says face. That is the top side of the cloth. Now, we're gonna flip it over so that the face is down and we're gonna have all of the excess on my side, on, you know, away from, pointing away from the rubber. And we're gonna give, give ourselves about a quarter of an inch of excess and start laying in our feather strip. Now, we're not looking to pound the feather strip all the way in at this moment. We're just looking to snug it up in there so that nothing moves. So the feather strip is not all the way in at this point. And then I take a piece of wood and I overlap and then go make it even with the back side of the rail, the wooden part of the rail. There is a slight step down as you're Pause the video for just a moment. The, uh, the back side of the rail, the outside portion of the rail, which is going to be the finished portion where the sights are and everything like that, that portion of the rail, the rail cap, sets slightly higher, usually sets slightly higher than the, the, the face portion of the rail where the rubber is. So... What we're going to do the first go around with with uh, with tapping the the feather strip in, we're tapping that feather strip in to make sure that the cloth doesn't move around on us or anything like that. Then we follow it up by uh, again taking our piece our block of wood pounding block, and we're going to cross over that uh, feather strip and cloth, and we're going to beat it down until it's even with the rail cap. Again, that's the portion with the sights and everything, the finished portion that you're going to rest your hand on when you play. We're going to make it even with that. So let's continue. We're going to grab ourselves a razor blade. And unfortunately, this is a brand new pack, so I had to open it up. So forgive me for fumbling through opening a pack of razor blades. So we grab ourselves a nice, sharp, fresh razor blade. And then we're gonna cut off the excess. Let David come around, give him the opportunity to see what it is I'm doing. And that little bit of quarter inch that we left, we're gonna go ahead and cut that off. Now, pause the video again. Okay, if you're cutting the re that, that excess off, if you did what I said before, which is lay that pounding block all the way across, your rail cap is slightly higher. That gives you a natural valley right there uh, that you can, a corner basically that you can cut into. So if you hold your razor at about a 45 degree angle right there, uh, and I use my finger to uh, pull that, that cloth back and that, that always keeps the cloth from it prevents the cloth from getting, prevents my razor blade from going over over the top of the cloth. Um, I'm always cutting underneath the cloth, as you can see right there. So if you've done that, you've got that natural shelf right there, that natural valley that you can, that you'll be able to cut your uh, your cloth at. So let's go ahead. So we cut it all the way down. And get to the end you're gonna have a little bit left and you just pull it and trim up any la loose threads and then we're gonna go to the other end and we're gonna cut a little bit past it and then out now we'll, we'll pause it right here okay now, if you notice, I put my pounding block directly at the edge of the feather strip, where the feather strip meets the rail cap. Now, you might be able to catch it, but if you notice my pinky right there uh, to the left, you'll notice my pinky I'm using as a guide against the rubber so that I don't push that pounding block too far in. 
basically I'm using the, uh, you know, I'm using my pinky as a guide and then I'm just gonna run straight down the rail and pound that feather strip in the rest of the way. So let's go ahead. And as I'm doing this, now I'm, I'm bringing that feather strip down to that lower level. And then when I fold the cloth over, the cloth and the, the rail cap, again, that's the portion of the rail that has the sights, the finished wood. Those are going to be at the same level. The cloth and that should be at the same level. So we'll grab our staple gun, and we're going to put one staple right in the middle. And usually if I'm dealing with, uh, and I'll stop the video here for a moment, usually if I'm dealing with a, a side rail, I'll go ahead and I'll do my side pockets first. I don't know why. It's not really important that you do. Uh, it's just the way that I do it. It's the way I've always done it. Uh, put my one staple right there in the middle and then I'll go all the way over to the side pocket and I'm going to put three staples in while pulling a... Uh, towards the pocket itself and back. Pop one staple in there and now I'm gonna pull straight back and put other the other two staples in. Now David's gonna come around and here's where I'm gonna show you the fold. So let's pause it right here. Now, that excess that we had on the top behind the feather strip, we're gonna fold that over Okay, let's go ahead. We folded that over and we're just gonna go straight back with it in a straight line. And then we're gonna fold the, the underside over. And then we're gonna push our finger down to where it just forms a natural V. And then you grab that piece of cloth that tucks out behind and you're gonna pull on it with your left hand and with your right hand, you're gonna pull straight back. Hold it in place and pop three staples in. And then we're gonna pop two staples in right behind the rail facing. And then we'll just go ahead from, our, from the center of the rail and we're gonna go ahead and put our staples in the rest of the way. All the way down to the side pocket. Now we'll move over to the corner pocket. So again, same thing, we're going to fold it over, but this time we're going to fold on an angle. We're going to put our cloth, push our cloth down, and you can get rid of a little bit more of that excess if you want. And then we're going to pull back. We're going to put two staples in behind the rail facings. And then I'm going to pause it here. And what I'm doing is, let's say if this is the right hand rail, I'm gonna pull to the right and back. And pop a staple. And with every successive staple that I go to put in, I'm pulling back and to the right. Now, what that's gonna do is it's gonna create a little bit of a ripple in, in the cloth right there. That ripple will probably extend all the way down to where the rail facing is. What you do is you take your staple gun. If it does that, you take your staple gun and bring it right to where that ripple begins, push down into the cloth, and then push it back. Essentially what you're going to do is you're going to push that, that ripple behind the staple. See it right there. You're putting your, your ripples behind the staple. Then you stop. When you get to the to that corner, right there where the feather where the rail facing ends and the wood begins, right there at that tip of uh, of your rubber, you're gonna stop once you get there, and then you're gonna go back to the middle of the rail. So let's go ahead and continue. When we get to the middle of the rail. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna stop here for a second. What we're doing is we're pulling back and to the left. If you're doing a right hand, a right, if you're 
pocket is on your right side, you're going to pull back and to the left so that you're working out any excess cloth. You're bringing it back towards the middle of the table. And you do it gradually. You don't want to try to get everything out of that, that cloth, uh, every bit of uh, wrinkle out of that cloth in one shot. You want to do it gradually. So let's go ahead. So I'm pulling back into the left. Back into the left every single time. And when I get down to the end, if you notice right there, I'll pause it again, I don't have any wrinkles. No wrinkles in there, okay? There's no excess cloth that can be seen. Once the table's put back together, there's no excess cloth that's gonna be wrinkled up or anything like that. It's all underneath the rail. So let's go ahead. Now, I would, I would strongly encourage you, and that's how you do one rail. Now, I would strongly encourage you that if, if you aren't quite following what it is I'm saying then watch over this video several times and and you know mute it forget about what I'm saying watch exactly what I'm doing and reproduce those motions but again working those wrinkles out in the opposite direction is also very very useful I'm going to pause the video one more time here. Uh, recently got a phone call from a guy. Actually, it was yesterday. I got a phone call from a guy that uh, saw one of my videos, and he was talking about replacing the feather strips. And he hadn't actually taken his table apart at, the, at this point, and he hadn't started recovering it or anything. Uh, and he was talking about replacing the feather strips. And my advice to him and my advice to anybody else is going to be, if you don't, have to replace the feather strips you don't replace the feather strips it's not like changing the oil in your car um, it is but it isn't they are a wear item they eventually will need to get replaced uh, but it's more like the bearings in your car eventually you know your wheel bearings they will need to be replaced eventually assuming you use it um, but you don't just replace them just because you're getting the tires changed so if you're replacing the cloth on your table, don't think that, oh, I'm replacing the cloth, I need to replace the rubber, and I need to replace the rail facings, and I need to replace the feather strips. No. If your rails and feather strips are good, if your rubber and feather strips and rail facings are all good, there is no need to replace them. And as much as, as I would like to make money on selling more rubber and rail facings and feather strips, you know, you just don't need to do it. Uh, I, I don't need to make that money if you don't need to spend that money. So let's continue. Now on this rail, when I go to pull, actually I think I'm grabbing another rail so that I can show you guys a side and corner again. On this rail, when I went to pull the cloth out of there, the feather strip broke. And you'll see it in just a moment here. Where's that? Come on. There it is. Okay, so the feather strip broke right there. Do we replace the feather strip? No. Absolutely no need to replace the feather strip just because it, it cracked right there. Again, this is underneath the cloth. All it's doing is the, the whole purpose behind that feather strip is to hold the cloth in. It's a friction fit. The fact that it snapped in half is no big deal. Again, we're gonna clean our rail. We're gonna grab our cloth. Well, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna straighten out that bed of wood right there, okay? Where it peeled up as I was trying to take it out, we're gonna you know, straighten it back up. Make sure we know exactly how it lines back up and we're gonna work it together to get the fibers to kind of stick together as much as they can. If they don't, if it doesn't stay put, no big deal. We just wanna make sure that we have it where it needs to go. So we'll grab our cloth, look for our face sticker. We're gonna flip it upside down. 
put about equal amounts on either end of the rail and then we're going to grab our feather strip put it right in the end push it down with our finger at first leaving about a quarter of an inch of excess and then we're going to go ahead and start tapping in the feather strip but when we get close to where that feather strip had broken we're going to stop and we're going to take our other piece of feather strip and we're going to put it together we're going to just wedge it back together and we're going to hold it down with our thumb and then we're going to continue on pounding on that feather strip and occasionally you'll get it where the feather strip uh, didn't quite go in where it was supposed to and you can tap it back at the end and again we're now we're going to go back with our pounding block across the whole thing across the feather strip then we're going to take our razor blade we're going to cut off our excess give David a chance to get around there cut off that extra quarter of an inch of excess on both ends now we're gonna again take our pounding block and using our, our pinky as a guide we're gonna pound it in the rest of the way only pounding in on the feather strip itself. And that fully seats that feather strip. Once we do that, we'll toss the cloth over and then flip the rail. Take our face sticker off, put that in our trash pile, flip the rail over. Again, we're going to take our razor, I'm sorry, our uh, staple gun. I'm going to pop one staple right in the center. Go over to our side rail. We're going to pull it back, put our three staples in. There's one, there's two, there's three right there at the end. We're going to fold over that bit of excess from the top, fold it over, just like that. We're going to run our finger from the point, from the nose of the, of the rail facing, straight back in, in a diagonal line. Just move that cloth and maybe roll roll the cloth until you get it perfectly lined up with the edge of your rail then you're gonna take the back and you're gonna kind of pull just a little bit just to snug it up there's that little there's that back piece of cloth and we're gonna pull on it to snug it up and what that'll do is it'll tighten it up right at the nose of the rail our cloth over, put our three staples in, and then our two behind the rail facing. And that's our that's our side pocket. Go back to the middle and we're gonna work our way straight straight over to the side pocket. bango bongo we got that all right now back over to the to the corner again we're gonna fold it but this time we're gonna fold at a much steeper angle grab it on the end and then we're gonna pull to the butt towards the bottom of the rail which is now flipped upside down so we're gonna pull back basically straight back we're gonna put two staples in behind the rail facing 
and then we're going to start pulling our cloth back and again this is a uh, our rail is on the left hand side so we're going to pull towards the, the back and to the right not so much that we get uh, wrinkles and then we're going to push our staple gun back so that we move those wrinkles to behind the staples now there's all that excess I was talking about so we go back to the middle and we're going to pull back and slightly to the left we're going to start working that out in the other direction back into the left back into the left so that you're pulling pulling all that wrinkle back towards the center of the rail Just lost footage from David. That's it. That's all there is to it. So there you go. That's how you recover a set of rails. Um, you know, I only showed you two rails in this video, uh, but you know, you just apply it to all six rails. I mean, you have corner pockets and you have side pockets, and I, I think I've showed you exactly how to go about doing both of them in this. Uh, yeah, only two different types, two different types of ends that you're going to have. It's either going to be a corner or it's going to be a side doesn't matter whether it's left or right none of that matters uh, just apply what you've learned here to your table and just apply it to all six rails there you go uh, upcoming video we still have the nightmare nightmare outdoor pool table that we are still dealing with um, I'll give you a, a little bit of a, of a update on what's going on with that table uh so we had to wait on we had to wait on the contractor to build a new a new wooden piece to go underneath the concrete portion of the rail and uh the con the contractor passed it off to basically a framing carpenter and uh framing carpenters are not really known for doing high precision work you know, and, and framing up a house, if you're off by an eighth or even maybe a quarter of an inch with the length of a stud, no big deal. I mean, you pound that thing into place and move on, get on with the next portion. When it comes to building fine furniture, or in this case, pool table rails, a sixteenth of an inch makes a difference. You cannot be off by even a sixteenth of an inch. It, it has to be precise. If your angles are cut at just the wrong angle, um, it's going to change the nose height, it's gonna, which in effect is going to change where the ball hits on, you know, where the center of the ball, how high or low above, above or below center of the ball that the rail is going to hit. Um, you know, if you change up the thickness of the, uh, uh, of the piece of wood that's underneath that concrete, it's going to raise up it's going to raise up the nose height of the of the rubber again if you change up the depth well now all of a sudden you've got rails that that you know are not perfectly aligned with each other and you're going to have one rail that's going to be kicked out away from the other one so you know this is more precision work than just framing up a house uh, I, I really wish the guy had taken more time uh, i tried to encourage him to you know have your guy study on this make sure that he's doing it uh to perfection because close does not count we're not we're not throwing hand grenades here it's not horseshoes and we certainly aren't launching nuclear weapons and close don't count so this has to be precise um <clears throat> so anyway we finally got something that is that is close enough and i've you know got it into uh got it working well, we went out to the customer's house day before yesterday, and we were gonna we were gonna go ahead and start assembling the table. When come to find out, the uh, epoxy 
which is this, the West Systems Marine Epoxy. And you know, believe it or not, this stuff really is good. It is fantastic stuff. However, maybe it had something to do with the expansion and contraction of the wood and lack thereof of the slate, but the slate liners have popped off. So in the interim, I have called up 3M and 3M advises their 3M560. So uh, waiting for Granger to get that in, we're gonna go ahead and, and pick up a couple of tubes of 3M560 adhesive sealant. And we're gonna use that to attach the frames, uh, the uh, slate liners onto the slates. Uh, in normal situations, I would, I, you know, this epoxy works beautifully. Um, Again, I, I have no idea as to why it popped off. It could be something in the slate. It could be something leaching out of the slate that caused it to fail. I don't know. I have, uh, in 30 years of doing pool tables, this is by far the one table that has given me the most problems. But in 30 years of doing pool tables, I have yet to have one that has defeated me. And I'm not about to let this one be the first. So stay tuned with that. Uh, I also have uh, the plans. I've, I've already got the video shot. Just need to do the editing. I want to do a, just like this video, where I'm giving you the finer points and recovering the rails. I'm also going to give you the finer points and leveling the table. So stay tuned for that video as well. Anyway, if you like the video, man, smash that like button. Okay, it means so much if you hit that like button. Um, and write me some comments. Tell me if you think I'm doing a good job here. Uh, I, I try to be very thorough with everything that I'm telling you. And, uh, you know, so smash that like button and give me some comments. Give me some feedback. Um, if, if uh, you know, tell me your story about your pool table, anything. I just like hearing from you. Plus it helps me, you know, rank up in the, in the, uh, search with the search algorithms of YouTube. So anyway, hope you guys liked the video and we will catch you on the next one. Y'all take care.